Well, to answer your question, adrenaline, also known as epinephrine, is secreted from the adrenal medulla and can play many roles during exercise. Generally, in response to physical activity, including swimming, catecholamines like adrenaline regulate respiratory, cardiac, metabolic, vasodilatory, and thermoregulatory functions. When you come to practice every day and train, the stress placed on your body increases its physiological demand, which enhances adrenaline response. In a 2001 study, Wyatt et al. investigated the role of adrenaline on carbohydrate oxidation. As you kids may know, utilization of carbohydrate macronutrients is very important to give us energy via the Krebs cycle while we swim. This helps to maintain our endurance and speed. Interestingly, Watt found an 18% increase in carbohydrate oxidation due to the breakdown of skeletal muscle glycogen and pyruvate dehydrogenase. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is responsible for converting pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. Additionally, Glusezinski in 2009 found that exercise-induced adrenaline allows for lipid mobilization in subcutaneous adipose tissue. This will allow utilization as fat for energy during swimming, especially for endurance training. This is useful as fat provides a more sustainable amount of energy over time. In both animal and human studies, researchers have noticed hypertrophied adrenal medullas that are capable of producing more catecholamines during high-intensity exercise. However, this doesn't mean adrenaline levels will always be higher in trained versus untrained subjects. It always depends on the demand. Your body is very smart and it's not going to release more adrenaline than needed. For example, Azad et al. in 2014 used mice in an eight-week training study. There were three different groups of mice, one that was the control that had no exercise intervention. The second training group included daily duration and speed variations, while the third training group incorporated weekly duration and speed variations. After the eight-week training period, the weekly training variation group actually produce less adrenaline in response to a lactate threshold test. The researchers believed that the weekly pattern variation led to less physiological stress and fatigue than the daily pattern variation group. Therefore, metabolic demand was higher in the daily variation pattern and in the untrained controlled groups. This supports the idea I discussed earlier how your body is not necessarily going to produce more adrenaline even though you're trained.
One final study that may interest you was by Nielsen et al. in 1984. They studied adrenaline changes in prolonged swimming. They found no change from 0 to 10 minutes from the beginning of exercise. However, there was a significant increase in adrenaline from 10 to 90 minutes into exercise. These results demonstrate that adrenaline concentrations increase as the body demands more energy with the longer you swim. In conclusion, adrenaline can play many different roles in response to exercise, including regulation of respiratory, cardiac, and metabolic functions. Trained athletes are capable of producing more adrenaline than untrained individuals. However, they may not see such a large response if the duration is pretty short or if the intensity is low. Okay, ready, go.